Hello everyone and welcome to the very first episode of our new series, Trading Using Reinforcement Learning. Our first episode is how to use the KRM Bandit algorithm to trade stocks. Today, we're going to be diving deep into a fascinating strategy that blends the world of quantitative finance with the power of machine learning algorithms. Remember to stick around because at the end, I will reveal the results I obtained using the KRM Bandit algorithm and it turned out to work a lot better than I was expecting. Quantitative researchers, or quants as they're commonly known, use complex models, statistical analysis, and innovative algorithms to make money in any kind of markets. Today, we will focus on financial markets, but these algorithms should work for any other markets. For instance, sports, trading coffee beans, or even just predicting the weather. You can think of it as having a superpower where you can predict, calculate, and even outsmart market randomness. These mathematical models are capable of finding profitable patterns that might otherwise just be invisible to the human eye. By rigorously testing the strategies with historical data, quants can craft methods that optimize returns while maintaining risks. And one such method is the Kaon Bandit algorithm, a deceptively simple yet powerful tool in the decision-making arsenal. There are many variants of the same problem, as you can see, but today we will focus on the vanilla version. In the K-Arm Bandit problem, an agent must choose between K options to maximize its cumulative reward. Its arm has an unknown reward distribution, making it challenging to balance exploration and exploitation. But what does all of this really mean? We are going to imagine that we are in a casino and we are faced with multiple slot machines. You can think that each one of these slot machines has an arm that we can pull and when we pull this arm we obtain a reward. And the question here is that you have to decide which machine to play to maximize your winnings over time. In our context, each slot machine or arm simply represents a stock and by selecting an arm, you're essentially deciding to invest in that stock, with the hope that its payout or profit will be high. So in this animation, what we are simply doing is we are exploring the environment and we are simply selecting a few arms at random. And when we pull these arms, we obtain some sort of reward. And then we try and keep an estimate of the average reward that each one of these arms is giving us. But this is just not a very good strategy. If you think about it, at the end of the day, we are just selecting arms at random. So we've got some sort of random strategy. What we should do is we should try and find an equilibrium between exploring the environment, that is just pulling arms at random, and exploiting the environment. And this is where Epsilon, our little friend, is going to come help us. In the K-Arm Bandit problem, Epsilon guides our choices balancing exploration and exploitation. Our approach uses a constant epsilon value of 10%, which means that 10% of the times we're gonna to choose to randomly pull an arm that is exploring the environment. And the other 90% of the time, we are going to choose the arm that has the highest expected reward. In our implementation, we just generate a random number between zero and one. Let's call it n, and if that number is higher than 0.1, our epsilon, which is to exploit, meaning that we invest in the stock that has shown the best performance so far, and otherwise we explore by picking a stock at random. And this balance ensures that while we stick mostly with our winning stocks, we still give every option a fair shot to prove its worth. So what you're seeing in this animation is exactly just that. We are generating a random number n between 0 and 1. If that number is higher than 0.1, we choose the stock with the highest estimate reward. Otherwise, we just choose a completely random stock. And sometimes that stock will be the stock with the highest reward. That can happen because it's completely random. But most of the time, we will be exploring the other arms. Now we are ready to see our algorithm in action with our stock trading example. 
Just so you know, the solution to the care and bandit problem that you just witnessed is called an epsilon greedy strategy. So we start by setting our epsilon value to 10% and remember that that means that we choose to exploit our environment 90% of the time. We're also going to have a random number generator and instead of having arms from slot machines, we're going to have 10 randomly selected stocks. As you can see, I introduced a graph to keep track of the cumulative reward and this will later help us assess how good the strategy is. The way in which our algorithm works is that every morning, we pick one stock to buy and by the end of the day, we sell it. And the reward is simply the percentage change in the stock's price. We've got our random number generator that generates a number between 0 and 1. And if the value is greater than our epsilon threshold of 10%, the algorithm exploits by choosing the stock with the highest estimated return. Otherwise, it simply explores by selecting a stock at random. As you can see, we compare this epsilon greedy strategy with a purely random strategy to establish a baseline. By doing so, we can measure how much better our strategy is at identifying profitable trades compared to a random chance. And while our animation only shows one of these random strategies, behind the scenes we actually tested this epsilon greedy strategy with 100 random strategies. That way we can confirm if our strategy has some sort of statistical significance or if it can actually beat the market. I thought it would be interesting to dive a bit deeper into how we actually compute the estimates for each one of the arms because as you might remember from earlier animations, every time we put an arm, we get a reward. But that reward doesn't just sit there. We use it to update how much we think the arm is worth. Now let's start simple. The more straightforward approach is to just compute the average reward every time. Sounds good, right? So every time we put an arm, we add the new reward to the previous ones and then divide by the total number of pulls. So you've got something like R1, R2, R3, all the way through Rn divided by n. But here's the catch. That method, while simple, can get a bit inefficient because it means we have to store every single reward we've ever seen, and that's not ideal when we're scaling up. So here's where we introduce something a little smarter. Instead of storing all rewards, we can use a recursive relation that updates our estimate without needing to keep everything in memory. So we introduce a new variable, q of n, and the beauty here is that we don't need to track every single reward, just the current estimate and the new reward we receive. Now we can take a step further by introducing gamma, and this is where things get really interesting. Gamma lets us decide how much weight we want to place on the new observation versus the past ones. This balance gives us the ability to fine tune how much we rely on what happened in the past versus what's happening now. Now, it's finally time to reveal our results. Can I get a drum roll, please? And here we have them, our final results. They show the cumulative reward over time using an epsilon greedy strategy. I have decided to do two implementations, one by simply estimating the value of the arms using the average of the rewards and one by using our gamma approach. As you can see, the simplest method performed better. But this tells us nothing if we do not compare our results with just some random strategies. So I decided to generate 100 random strategies to compare our results. And as you can tell, we've done pretty, pretty well. One thing that's useful to do is to compute the standard deviation of the random strategies, as you can see there. And usually if our strategy performs better or outside a confidence interval of two standard deviations, as you can see here, that means that we've done pretty well. As a bonus, I plotted a third standard deviation and our simple strategy still beats this threshold, which means that our strategy is probably quite robust. Finally, here's a graph showing how our strategy compared to the stocks that we observed. And just for fun, I decided to compare our epsilon greedy strategy with 1000 random strategies. 
and then with 10,000 random strategies. Thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you want to dive deeper, you can check out my Patreon for access to the code I use. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what strategy you'd like to see next. See you in the next one.